Hello YouTube, this is Ryan here, formerly known as RLD Shigs on my own channel. Um, coming at you with a tutorial on how to make a 2D vector into 3D using uh, Cinema 4D and Photoshop. So first what you want to do is you just want to pick out your image. I chose a simple black and white tribal vector tattoo, whatever you want to call it. Um, you're, it could it doesn't have to be an image it could be text you could do this with anything so um, what you want to do first to start off there's two ways that we could go about doing this you, we can go using the pen tool and carefully just outlining the shape um, but yeah that would take a while so for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna go about doing it the second way um, the first way, using the pen tool, is probably the most accurate way uh, of, of getting your shape perfect the way you want it. Um, that's if you know how to use the pen tool, of course. But um, yeah, the second way, which is a much, much more easier, simpler, just click and it makes your selection. And since it only selects what's attached, you have to um, get the rest here, right? these uh, little extensions. So what you want to do is hold shift on your keyboard and click the extensions as well. And once they all have the little marching ants, then you can uh, go on over to the paths tab over here and then click on the drop down menu and click make work path and leave the tolerance to one. <clears throat> once you have that, you can go to file export paths to illustrator and click OK. Um, I already have mine saved as tribal toot for a tutorial. So now that that's saved we can go on over to Cinema 4D and open the tribal toot uh, thing. So yeah. Once we have that open, you'll have the path here. This is the exact same path as our Photoshop one, which is right here. And uh, if I put a layer on top of it, you can see that that's the exact same path as right there. So whatever you got in Photoshop is going to be going into Cinema 4D. So once you open it, you'll be given a little folder over here. Um, which is going to be called whatever you save the file as and you want to open that up and these are all the the paths the separate paths that you chose in Photoshop so you can move them all around separately and whatnot it works good if you're doing it with text because you can edit every single letter so yeah that's pretty cool um, let me just get everything back so yeah once you have that open, you want to select all of them and drag them out of the tribal tutorial folder. And then just delete the folder. So, uh, when you have all your paths just chill in there, you want to go to this little sphere inside the square, the cube, I mean, sorry. And then hold it and then go to extrude nerves. And uh, what you want to do now is, since you have four paths, four separate paths, you're going to need four extrude nerves. So you want to hit control C to copy the extrude nerves and then you want to hit control V and then control V and then control V. So you have the same amount of extrude nerves as you do paths. So once you have that done, you would just want to drag all the paths into the extrude nerves and make sure each extrude nerves has a path. So you just close those for now. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it, but if you want to go the little extra mile, we can do this. Um, whoa. Select all your extrude nerves and go to fillet cap and then fillet cap. And I usually just make them, well, they're too big right now, so I'm just going to put them to the smallest, put them at one. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a sec. So once you have your fillet caps on, you can click in the materials box and edit a material. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one black, but not completely black. <clears throat> and then I'm going to add some reflect reflection onto it. So you want to turn the brightness down to zero, and then you go to the drop down menu on texture and hit Fresnel. And then I usually turn that to about 70. 70 should be good. And then after, um, you want to copy the material, so you hold control and then click and drag until you see this white bar right here. And it will copy the material with all the same settings except you can edit whatever you want. So I'm just going to change the black to a blue. And yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to drag all these onto there. You see, when I change the color, you can see the different paths that I have to add everything on to. And then I'm going to put the blue on top of the black. And then, after that's done, select all the blue colors and then go to selection here and hit R1. And then hit enter. So, now that you can see that we've done that, you can, if you you see the blue outline and when you render it it looks pretty cool but um I usually like to add one more thing before I finalize my renders and that's an HDRI so um I, I'm not I, I can't quite explain to you what an HDRI is it, I've learned from watching YouTube videos and whatnot but it just makes it's pretty much reflections and lighting without actually making your own lighting. So I'm going to take this HDRI here and drag it into the materials box and then just hit no. Um, I'll put a download to the HDRIs um, in, the dis in the description of this video or whoever. Yeah. So once you have your material here, you want to go over here and then make a sky. And then you want to drag the HDRI into the sky. <laughs> And uh, once you have that there, you want to hit, you want to right click on the sky and go to Cinema 4D tags and then hit compositing. And then once you're in the compositing uh, selection, you want to go to scene by camera and then untick it. And um, you should have some sexy reflections like so. So yeah, this has been Ryan. Um, uh, please comment, like, rate, subscribe, whatever. I uh, hope this helped, and uh, thank you for watching. Peace.